The Lord be with you. Lessons from a Turtle Sissy and I were going somewhere. I don't remember where. What I do remember is seeing a turtle, a big turtle, crossing the road. I maneuvered our car so that I would not run over it with the tires and kept on driving. Sissy looked at me. You're just going to drive on? That turtle is going to get hit. We have to go back and save it. So we debated a bit and reached a compromise. We went back to save it, but I stayed in the car with the flashers on to make sure people saw us and wouldn't crash into us. Sissy might have been willing to risk her life to save a turtle, but I was not willing to risk her life for a turtle. That turtle had made pitiful progress. I did, however, admire that turtle's persistence. It wasn't giving up. It was a hot day. The road was even hotter. But slowly, painstakingly, that turtle was making its way step by heated step toward the other side of the road. Anyway, Sissy got out of the car, picked up that turtle by the sides of its shell, and moved it to the cool grass on the other side of the road. Now, lest you think Sissy is the only animal lover in our house, allow me to tell you the story of three little kittens. Two of them you are looking at. We still have them. A neighborhood cat blessed us one day by leaving three of the tiniest kittens on our doorstep. They wanted nothing to do with us. When they saw us, they showed us how fast they could run. One of them actually scaled a 20-foot brick wall to get away from me. Brick walls are relatively flat. There aren't really places for cats to, to get any leverage enough to climb the wall. But sure enough, that cat went 20 feet in the air. I had never seen a cat do that. We started putting food out for them. Slowly but surely, they began getting closer to us. Eventually, two of them made a mad dash to rub against our leg, but would then run off. Petting them was out of the question. We kept putting out food. That day finally came when they deemed us worthy of their attention and allowed us to scratch them behind their ears. Anyone who has a cat understands that sentence. Two of them only. That third cat, the calico, just wasn't going to have anything to do with us. We kept trying to make friends. The winter months came. I went out to find them on a stormy day. It was pouring down rain, and it was freezing. I found them huddled together in a storm drain that had the grate removed. They were wet and scraggly. They looked like something the cat would drag in. The next day was clear and sunny. Sissy and I surrendered and opened the door when we next saw them. Two came running into the house immediately. That third cat, the calico you're looking at, would look at us, but wouldn't come close. I put out another can of food. When she came to eat, I grabbed her behind her neck, carried her into the house, and closed her in the downstairs hallway. I tell you the truth, she literally turned in her skin and was biting my hand every step of the way. I knew I couldn't let go. I'd never see her again. I still have the scars to prove that adventure. There was a trail of my blood all the way from the front door to the door that led downstairs. A trail of blood on white carpet. I looked at my bleeding hands. I looked at Sissy, and I said, All I'm trying to do is save her life.
That cat now follows me around from room to room and sleeps mostly on the arm of my chair. It's been 12 years since that day, but she usually acts as if Sissy is trying to kill her. Yes, in the picture she is laying and looks content on Sissy, but if Sissy reached out to touch her, she would spring away. She is, Sissy is allowed to touch her occasionally, but I'm still the only one that can pick her up. I look at those cats and I think about that day when they came inside. I think about that turtle. They had no idea who we were or even what we were. They had no idea what we were trying to do for them. We were trying to help them. They didn't know that. We were trying to save their lives. They didn't know that. I moved the car to make sure I didn't run over the turtle, but kept on driving. I did my part, or so I thought. We had places to be. Where would I be now if God had too much to do, was too busy to turn aside and save me? What does it mean to me that God rescued me and led me beside the still waters? God has brought me into a whole new house and family. God has put me on an entirely different path. And I wonder, how many times does Jesus look at his once bleeding hands and say, all I'm trying to do is save their lives. Amen.